Good afternoon and welcome to the Autumn Lecture Series 2023. Today we are discussing Joseph Nye's smart power and its relationship to the Simon Arnold Nation Branding Index. So what are we talking about? So let me tell you something about some about the Eurovision. Um, the Eurovision in 1977 was won by Miriam, Mary, Miriam from France, and the song was called "L'Oiseau et l'Enfant." It's an anti-war song. It was 32 years after the unconditional surrender of Germany in World War Two, and a lot of people in France and other countries that had been occupied were had been hurting in the 50s and 60s a lot. A lot of crash lives, a lot of walking wounded. But a new generation of French musicians, spearheaded by Gerard Lenormand, whose um, mother was, was a French woman and his father was... Um, an unknown Wehrmacht soldier, okay? And spearheaded by him, there was a new feel-good factor French music scene to forget about the war, about approximately between 25 and 35 years after war, in other words, the 1970s. It's the, it's, it's, there's even a channel, an internet radio channel to this day called Sean Francois on Dies on, on it. Check it out. It's a great channel. Salvador Adama, Salvador Adama, people like that started to emerge. And um, they were anti-war, but they weren't uh, occupied with war. In other words, they, they weren't war songs. They weren't what are known as songs of the war or rebel songs. They were make love, not war kind of songs, you know. And there's a line from, from Laws of Oil on Fund the Bird and the Child that says, Noir et la guerre les hommes la misère. Black is the war, the men and the poverty. Qui va tenir le reine de temps? Who want to keep the, the reins of, of time? Pay the more na pa de frontera, pour sakian la carte Countries of love don't have any borders. That they can talk about the heart of a child. So, it's an anti-war song. Thirty-two years after the war ended, and um, that is known as soft power cultural diplomacy. What, no, what Joseph Knight calls smart power is, is a mixture of soft power and hard power. So hard power is boots on the ground. So you, you might say the French army, we we'll just stick with France because this is going this way in hurry, but it could apply to any country. The French army being in Berlin under the quadripartite agreement in the 1960s um, against the Russian occupation of, of, of East Berlin and East Germany. That peacekeeping mission is an example of hard power. And then something like, imagine if they started to distribute Christine Arnotti or Joseph Josfo or Vladimir Spilsman or else um, Louis Mal Holocaust memoirs in German schools. That would be soft power. But together, those memoirs and the Eurovision song with the roots on the ground being on a peacekeeping mission is an example of smart power. What Joseph now no, he calls smart power. So as I said, the soft power is cultural diplomacy. You know, it's cultural diplomacy. So like um like this YouTube channel um is is an example of diplomacy, you know, but it's not like it's kind of cultural diplomacy, but say if it was if it was something like um, you too can be cultural diplomacy, you know, you too the band because 
they're always reaching out to Irish America, so they can be seen as cultural diplomacy. Or Bono always has lots of causes. Remember that's the one at the start their walk on with that woman in Asia who was comes on and she says, the way might be very long and very hard. So please stand by it. She was a victim of human rights abuses and Bono was giving her advice, you know. So that that's very sad, you know, that's a very sad cause that Bono was championing. Now Bono championed other causes that people didn't like, like effing Jack Chirac out of it for nuclear testing in, in, in Polynesia, you know, so in in in, in Paris in Paris MTV Awards. So Bono isn't like a saint and neither am I. You know, he makes mistakes as as Justin Bieber said, it's very difficult to believe that neither Justin Bieber or Bono or Peter Hanley were not made in a factory, but believe it or not, we do make mistakes from time to time. I know people can't believe it, but it's true we were not made in a factory, like, you know. But anyway, um no 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 how where well, that's got it Simon Anholt developed a nation branding index and it's, it's published annually and it's there's brand factors you see so how that relates to cultural diplomacy is if you're branding music irish music you're branding ireland if you're branding french holocaust memory you're branding jewish people and french people if you're branding the german football team you're branding west west Deutschland, you know and so on and so on there is a huge like i could talk about west Deutschland all day they have boots on the ground in Afghanistan, for instance, to, to keep the in, a, in what's called the International Security Assistance Force, that's supposed to be a peacekeeping mission. But as you might say, was it a war? That uh, was it an occupation? You know, you might say when training camps were destroyed of Al Qaeda, then it became a war, an occupation. Do you follow an illegal occupation? It's controversial because Ireland aren't in Afghanistan or weren't in the IS, in the ISAF. Do you follow? So it's not sanctioned by, by, by the UN. Now, um, the other thing is it's sanctioned by NATO, but we're not in NATO, you know. We're not in NATO. Um, something like um, German German rock music, German um, language schools like Goethe Institute, you know, um, German cities like Dusseldorf holding the Eurovision or something like that. German people, you know, German cruise ship in coming into Cove, like Desider Tam, like are examples of German cultural diplomacy. Germans are born cultural brand, but the brand, what's the brand of Germany when you think of, like everybody wants, seems to want a holiday in Italy. Everybody seems to want um, French clothes and perfumes and, and, and food and and that's it. Everybody wants Italian perfume and clothes and food. French. Everybody wants French football. Foot footballers. You know, France has so many unique nation brands that are that make them really high up on Simon. And everybody wants a hamburger from America or, you know, a Ford Ranger or you know, so many cool things. Everybody wants a holiday in get a shop all your can in Macy's and watch Jay Z and Alicia Keys. You know. Like, Jay-Z has done so much for the U.S. nation brand as well, you know. And that's like one of 52 states, one small part of one of 52 states. But believe it or not, that's an integral part of the, the like, black America has become an integral part of the nation brand. So, say, gangster rap then might be damaging the nation brand by being too negative, you see. So, you have to be very careful what you're exporting then as well. Or rebel songs might be damaging the Irish nation brand by being too xenophobic or Nigel Farage might be damaging the British nation brand by being too xenophobic. Do you follow? Or somebody else in France like Jewel or someone or Hoysland Frey might be too much of a rakai for people in around Europe who are respectable who might think all the French are full of knackers, you know? So you have to be very careful what you're doing to Simon Anhalt's nation branding index every time you're an international actor and even me as an international figure i take effort in my dress i shave myself i brush my teeth i don't drink alcohol the night before i go on a show you know because i care about the nation brand of ireland very deeply you know i do now it doesn't matter who's top or who's bottom of it you can make up your own mind everybody has a brain they can make up who there is the real nation brand winners and losers